Hey guys, Lucas from Explore here. Today we're going to do some street photography around Kichijoji. And I want to talk about a topic that is meaningful to me, and that is the topic of jealousy in the context of photography and art, and maybe even life in general. I guess it can be extrapolated. But before that, please remember, if you are coming to Tokyo, please consider booking a workshop with us. There's also a map of Tokyo photo spots that you can buy on our website and access, lifetime access, I should add. And also, if you'd like to support us on Patreon, that is also very helpful. But even if you all you do is just watch the video, like it and subscribe and leave a comment, that is already excellent. Everything else is a bonus. All right. So let's get on to the video. I explore. So what am I talking about when I mean jealousy? It only I mean, it applies for all kinds of things in life, of course. But in this case, I'm thinking about photography and art specifically. And it's like when, you know, you see somebody else's work and you just think, I mean, it happens to me all the time. I don't know about you guys, but it's like, oh, wow, I, I wish I could have done that. Or like, why don't I have the chance to do that? Or why don't I drop what I'm doing, like stop shooting what I'm shooting and shoot that kind of stuff? Because I like it. So it's not a negative thing. It's, it's not a, by the way, it's not a, to be very clear, it's not a jealousy about like the level of success. Like, oh, why does this guy have more followers? Or why does this guy or girl, you know, whatever, you know, have this job? Or, that's not what I'm talking about. That's. I don't think I've ever really experienced a huge issue with that. Of course, sometimes I am like, why does this person have so many followers? Like, how can I achieve that? But that's different. I'm more talking about like, I really like that kind of work and maybe I should be the one producing that too, right? And then, um, and that's, to me, to me, that's a bit of a negative approach to jealousy, like, or a negative way to deal with it. Because then you end up, and I think this happens to a lot of people, you end up in the echo chamber. You're just doing what other people are doing because it's cool and popular, right? But having said that, a good friend once told me a very, and I still kind of remember this phrase, it's very simple, don't be jealous, be inspired. Meaning like, if you see something you like, that should inspire you to, you know, to produce a certain kind of work, right? Or, or to, you know, to push yourself forward. But there's this kind of fine line between being inspired, but then actually doing, you know, something unique to yourself, right? Not copying somebody, right? So I like to try to like pick and pick out things from work that I love, like specific elements um, that I find very interesting. And my favorite example is, is, is Saul Leiter. I'm sure many of you know I'm a big fan of his work and I certainly draw inspiration from his work, um, but I try not to duplicate his work, right? That's the idea. I'm just trying to think, I like, specifically for him, I like the way he uses layers, color and reflections on glass. And I certainly do that in my work. And also I do have this feeling that like I gravitated towards that stuff even before I ever heard of Saul Leiter. So I feel like, well, I'm not just like seeing it and copying, but, but that's, that's a moot point, honestly. It doesn't matter. If, even if you see somebody's work for the first time and then you just kind of imitate it, I think that's okay as long as ultimately you use it kind of in your own way or your own context. But the pitfall is like just literally duplicating someone else's work, going to the same places, right? Shooting it in the same way. Even these days, you know, editing the same way, using presets. This is, by the way, why I don't sell presets. I don't even use presets for myself. I kind of have this philosophical sort of slant against presets. But anyway, that's a, that's a whole other, you know, side, side point there. So let's see what we can shoot. That was a long ramble. And I was hoping to see something cool on the street. Um, Kichijoji is an area that I'm pretty familiar with, but not that much. I didn't have to spend that much time here yet. And by the way, today I brought out the uh, 28 1.4. I haven't shot with this lens very much in recent months and I've kind of been using it more and more these days just because I like the big aperture, kind of a throwback. But you know, with the Z mount on the Z lens, there is a noticeable, like a little bit worse autofocus compared to um, the native Z lenses, but it's worth it. It's worth it to take a hit. And autofocus isn't everything, most important thing. Maybe I can do a quick panning shot of this guy on the bike because I'm waiting at the light anyway. Let's see how the AF handles this. Hmm. Oh, yeah, the AF was good, but um, he was going a little too slow and there's a car in the background. Wasn't that good. Hmm. 
That's not bad. Kind of interesting. Yeah, Kijijoji is this kind of like little bit trendy, kind of hipster, cool area, you know. And then, but naturally I just gravitate towards the, the gritty underbelly area, like the part of it that's a little more rough. Let's see here. Oh, here we go. I kind of, ooh, yeah, that's kind of, maybe it's the, not the right light for this tonight, but I like this, uh, actually, that's a very interesting scene, even more so than I thought, because I can, sh I can focus using the big aperture through this mesh thing and actually see the stuff behind it pretty well, or of course I could just focus right on it, which I eventually did. Let's do it at an angle. Now that I know I can focus through it and get the stuff behind, ooh, that's, I don't know, it's pretty abstract. I mean, it's not the most beautiful scene back there either. But it's kind of surprising that I could get a pretty sharp photo of what's behind the screen and then it creates this interesting bokeh in the foreground. One more. <laughs> Let me do a vertical one. Wow, that's a cool effect. I've never done that before. I've never, I don't think I've ever used one of these, these little like screens with the little circles in them, very common around Tokyo. I mean, maybe not very, but you see them. I've seen them many times. I've never shot it like that. That's a surprising effect. Shows you, you can be always surprised with photography. That's what I love about it. As long as you keep exploring. So yeah, it's like this kind of, a, the, the, this concept sort of arose recently in my mind because I had a little like, you know, interaction with somebody on, online, right, in the comment section. And somebody said something to me like, well, first of all, they lamented that I've changed how I shot over the years and they wish I shot the way I used to shoot. And I thought that was kind of shitty. I don't, I don't like when people say that because it's like, you know, let, let me just be me. Let me shoot how I like to shoot. You know, they're my values. Let's maybe go around the block here one more time. So like, why are you trying to like convince me that I should shoot some, you know, some way I used to shoot? You know, I've moved on from that. So what, what you know, why? Why make me try to feel bad about that? I don't know. I didn't like that. But then they, th another person, I don't remember if it was the same person or a different person chimed in, doesn't matter. But somebody said something like, well, there's so much competition on Instagram. There's so many great photographers, you know, and they're kind of like, they're outdoing you sort of thing. And, I, and that, that comes back to the jealousy thing, because I think also the jealousy concept, like when you, I feel jealous, it comes from this mentality of competition. And by the way, I am a quite competitive person by nature. Like, when I used to play like video, video games with my friends or my brother or something, I always, oh man, I hated losing. I gotta win, I gotta be the best. When I'm not the best, I feel kind of down, right? A little bit. And so definitely th that kind of drive towards competition, you know, feeds that jealousy thing because that's when I feel most jealous. When somebody is similar to me, they do similar work and then I feel like they are a competitor. When I see work that's like totally not like mine, like just for example, like ra random example, like portraiture or even let's say landscape, urban, la uh, sorry, um, natural landscape. I almost never shoot that. Sometimes just for fun when I'm in the mountains or something, but it's really not my thing, right? So when I see great uh, uh, natural landscape, I'm just like, yeah, awesome work, fantastic, beautiful. Really, I feel inspired more than jealous, 100%, because it just makes me think like, I should go to the mountains and start shooting landscape because this is gorgeous. But when I see work that's similar to mine, meaning work in Tokyo, right? Night photography, you know, a lot of people shoot this and it's really good, then I, sometimes I feel like, oh man, I should go shoot that. And again, it comes from this competitive idea. But here's the deal. Here's the real fact. I'm gonna tell you right here. Art is not a competition, okay? There are no winners or losers. Yes, sure, in maybe in a commercial sense, you could make that argument. You could say that, you know, okay, this artist is more successful than that artist because his work is better, so people are more likely to pay for that. True, I agree, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're just talking about the personal expression through art, right? Express yourself authentically, right? That is not a competition. And if somebody's creating great work and they're creating great work that's similar to yours, so 
So what? Doesn't matter. And, or if they're creating different work or their work is somehow more popular as I already alluded to on social media, doesn't matter because it's not a competition. You're not competing against anybody else. At most, you could say you're competing against yourself, meaning like maybe you know, you're know you trying to evolve. You want to do a, go a different direction. But I think even then, that's, that's not fair. That's not a fair thing to say. I think really art is just about expressing yourself in the moment, how you truly feel authentically, right? And that's why, I'm gonna shoot this cool little green light here. That's why copying other people and looking to others and being like, oh, I'm gonna shoot like these guys is not necessarily the right way to go. Because then you're, you're not being true to yourself. You're not being authentic potentially, right? All right let me do one. Oh, right into the light is kind of wild. It's actually like flickering really hard because of the LED but that shouldn't really affect the photo, but I think that's too much. That's obviously no good. Yeah, that's no, that's no bueno. Let me just do one. No, it's fine. I think I shot it the right way from kind of the front with the light there. It's not even that great. I mean, it's okay. It's just kind of an interesting scene, an interesting way it catches the light. Wait, wait, maybe like from really edge on? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Woo. That was kind of interesting too, but I'm just trying to get that, like the way the light rakes across those wrinkles in the wall there, that's kind of neat. But anyway, so basically it's a slippery slope, like I was saying. I think it is great for learning and for kind of evolving your style to look at the masters. It's not to say that you should ignore the great people who came before you. It's great to look at their work and then consider, okay, what can I take away from this? What is useful from here? And then apply it to your own work in some way. But then there's a, there's like kind of a line you cross if you're just like, oh, this is so good, I want to compete with this person, so I want to go and like replicate some of their work. Not necessarily replicate, sometimes you do a different stuff, but it's like too similar. And that's that echo chamber, and that's what I'm afraid of. And I think we do a lot of, we meaning people in general, but then also photographers specifically, we do, I think, apply this competitive aspect. We try to kind of like outdo each other. And I think social media certainly hasn't helped because again, they, they put numbers on things, they quantify things with numbers, so you see, a photo with a lot of likes and a person with a lot of subscribers and then you think well if I want a lot of likes and I want a lot of subscribers well maybe I got to do something like that or one-up them in some way and it becomes a competition and I think that's really not good and that is the wrong way to channel that, that tinge of jealousy and I think that's actually where the jealousy stems from um, but more than that more than that there's something even deeper at play here I feel and that's the issue of values right I feel like rather than coming at it from like the work, we come at it from the ground up, from the values themselves. So like, what do you value in art that you look at, but also art that you make, right? And so rather than saying like, oh, this work is so good, so maybe I should take something from it, but does it actually jive with my values? Like as an artist, right? Like, you know, and, and uh, it's very hard to enumerate your values, but here are some of mine. Of course, as an urban kind of street photographer, right? I kind of don't like labels, but that is, that is an ap ap applicable label to me, I gotta admit. Um, of course, undeniably, then I value candidness, right? So I really don't like staging my photos, but there are a lot of really great stage kind of street looking photos that people do. Kind of less so these days, but you used to see a lot of like, you know, people come, they bring their friend, and then, let's go that way actually. And then um, they pose them in an, you know, in some scenario in the city, and then like that kind of, I'm not saying they pass it off as a street photo, but they might not even, but it has that vibe, but it's staged, right? And that's, that maybe doesn't matter to some people. That's fine. That's actually, it should be fine because their values are not my values, right? The same thing goes for editing, for example. A lot of people who do urban night kind of Tokyo photography, they put a lot of strong, you know, colors on it, very blue, very purple. And there was a time when I used to kind of look down on that, I sort of criticized it right? At least in my mind, you know, and sometimes to my friends. I realized that's not cool. In fact, there is a, a photographer who I once said that to. I was like, oh, bro, this is, this is not, this is like, yeah, it's, a, it's not an interesting scene. You just put a bunch of filters on it. And then that person kind of like took a little offense to that. I was wrong for saying that. That was not cool. Um, let's go more this way. There's a cool little side street I want to find. It's a little farther down. I shouldn't have said that because, again, I was judging their work by my values. But my values are mine, their values are theirs. So there shouldn't be any, you know, any judgment that way, you know? 
And then again, that goes the same when you look at other people's work and you get this tinge of jealousy. I feel like what we do, it's a trap we fall into where we judge our own work by someone else's values. This is a no-no, guys, okay? So the suggestion is don't be jealous, be inspired. Sure, use that, that energy in a positive way. But more than that, stick to your values, right? Define and, and create your own values and then stick to them in your art. And I think this actually applies for life in general, but let's not go there. But I do think you can extrapolate that easily when it comes to behaviors or things you do in your life or choices you make. Stick to your values more than comparing yourself to others and then, you know, kind of following that because just because they're successful or whatever, it's something that, you know, instigates that kind of jealousy mentality, right? Honestly, I gotta say, I talked with Axel a little bit before we shot this video, and this is, some, this is an idea that's been brewing in my mind. I really want to like get this out into a video or maybe a blog post. Maybe I'll write it in a blog post someday anyway, because um, I think this is important. I think it doesn't get talked about very much. I think people kind of sweep it under the rug, but I actually feel, I'm going to go out on a limb, I feel it affects a lot of people. I think we all deal as artists, especially in this, you know, just saturated social media age with this, you know, seeing, we, we see, and, and this is the way to think about it, I see everybody else's work as sort of like this monolithic thing, right? And then, and then versus just me. So how can you actually compete, you versus everybody, right? Because if you take the totality of the work out there, of course it's all better than your work. It doesn't matter who you are, because even if you're the most talented artist on the planet, there's an infinity, basically, of thousands of other artists out there who are doing great work, right? So it doesn't matter. What matters is, are you working true to your own values? So this one's cool, but there's also this one, and I love the little sign, which says, man, I always screw up reading kanji. Kojo, I think, right? No, Axel shake his head. Shoro. No, Koro. No, wait a minute. Why can't I think of this? It means little street. Yeah, they're, they're laughing at me. Ah, uh, hi, yeah. Muzukashii kono kanji. Koro, shoro, shoujo. Koji. Koji. Ha, huh. okay. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Ah, America. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I studied in America. Where? Uh, UPenn. Yeah, cool. Yeah, okay. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Friendly people. But yeah, embarrassingly, I couldn't read it. So it's. I already forgot. Koji. Koji. It just means a little street. And then Noren is the like the little curtain they put in front of the shops, right? Axel's nodding his head like, yeah, Axel, I know that one, I know that one, okay? So we're gonna go into Noren Koji, it's a cool little lane. I actually kinda wanna shoot here, but this, this guy is just kinda standing there and I don't really want his picture, he's not that interesting, but because I want the sign, right? Here, let's just do it with him there. It's okay. Maybe I'll grow to like it. It'd be nice to get someone cool passing by. I actually missed one. There was a, a lady that passed by in a hat that looked kind of cool, but I was on a slow shutter because I thought, okay, nothing's moving. I'll save the ISO, but now I'm back on 500. These days I've been using 500 at night instead of 250. That's very kind of, you know, we went from deep philosophy to simple technical things, but, you know, since I've gotten the Z9, it's very high resolution, right? 45, whatever it is, megapixels. So what used to be a sharp photo in terms of motion, at that resolution, I noticed the lack of you know, a slight bit of blur, which frankly shouldn't matter because when I scale it down, you won't see it anyway, but it bothers me. And, you know, I have the 1.4 lens and the ISO is great in this camera, you know, it looks great. So I was just like, you know what, I'll just crank the shutter instead of 250. I've been shooting 500 these days a lot. I just like this depth, like I can get the shutters on the outside, but then I can also get, you know, I can see into the thing. Those are, this is the same thing. Oh, you did? Yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> hey, I think that's the first time that that happened in a video. Because people do sometimes recognize me and say hi on the street, which I always appreciate. If you're one of those people and you're watching this, thanks for saying hello. I always try to make time to talk to people. Um, that's the first time that happened while we're shooting it. That's interesting. It's like inception. <laughs> Very cool. All right, so let's shoot this one more time just to make sure I got it in the bag. And then we'll move on, because I've been here for a while. Man, 
Man, I haven't been here, I mean, I've been here recently a bunch of times, but years ago, I should say, I took a photo of this sign. And I'm actually surprised this old sign's still there somehow. I just kind of thought it wouldn't exist much longer because it's so like, you know, decrepit and kind of falling apart. But there it is, let's do another photo of it. And maybe a vertical shot makes sense here so I could see the alley below. Way. I love the vibe here, but there's just like not really any characters out that could really be the main character of the scene for me. It's kind of cool. Maybe it's just because, you know, I got the camera following me around, I'm a little shy, but, and also it's kind of like not that full, but I'm a little bit, you know, a little shy photographing people tonight, I don't know. But also like nobody really stood out to me. There wasn't anybody who was like truly, I think, in need of a photograph. So I'll just shoot the atmosphere, lovely. <clears throat> Video Information Center. I have a feeling that whatever that shop is, it, Used to be there, now it's this bar, and they just kind of kept the sign just for fun. Um, let's go around this way. I think that's the end of the, the lanes, actually. Let's go through this little alley here. I usually stay away when I'm doing photography from these big shopping streets like this, these arcades or shopping guys in Japanese. Too well lit, it's just kind of flat. But this little passage is pretty cool. Let's see what we can get here. Got a nice grit. Remember I took a nice photo in this street years ago. In shooting in the other direction. I mean, is it nice? I don't know. I remember liking it at the time when I shot it. So I love these machines here on the side and they are still here after years and years. But um, yeah, I just want to say one last thing, and that's kind of like, I think this video is a kind of a, a good example or sort of like putting my money where my mouth is or an example of how to apply what I'm saying because, you know, as we just walked through there, I did feel like, yeah, I'm not really shooting anything, nothing called out to me. Maybe I just didn't see it. Maybe it's because we're shooting the video and I'm distracted. People sometimes give me this criticism like, ah, you're not really, you know, trying hard enough or not shooting anything like in the video. And it's like, yeah, but like sometimes I just don't see it, you know? You gotta, I think most of you do appreciate this, but you gotta appreciate that these videos are very much like behind the scenes in a sense. Like, I'm not just showing you the good stuff. It's literally, like, I do, we do cut things sometimes, but it's usually just kind of like uncut. It's just like a walk through an area. And if I don't shoot anything good, I don't shoot anything good. It's still in the video. It's just there. And so I don't know how much we just cut right now, but I really wasn't shooting much. Maybe we kept it because the, I think Axel's uh, performance was excellent shooting the action. But uh, I didn't really shoot anything. But the thing is, I don't feel 
very bad about that. Let's go forward one more because again, it comes back to like, maybe back in the day, I would have felt like, man, I came to this area, I didn't shoot anything good. And maybe somebody else shot, oh, this is nice. This is nice. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. Something I learned, re you know, maybe not recently, but over the years, it's good to get close, but sometimes it's good to pull back a bit and just get the whole scene. And I don't know why I'm using the screen. I just kind of went for it because that's how, how the camera was at that moment. And do I need 1.4? I'm keeping it on 1.4 because I, I just kind of want that background to be as shallow as possible, but maybe that's not necessary. And that's a nice scene. Very cool. Let me just double check these. I'm going to chimp here because like these guys aren't going anywhere. I could be here for 10 minutes chimping and still be like, meh, let's try that again. Let's do a second round. Just be in the moment. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah. What was I just saying about not getting a good photo? Come on. All right. So I think we'll end it around there on that note. But um, nonetheless, my point still stands. Even if you're not producing something great at the moment or you're looking to other people and thinking like, oh, that's so good. It doesn't mean that what you're doing doesn't have value especially to you and that's what I'm trying to get at right stick to your values shoot the things you believe in create your art the way you want to create it and don't let anybody tell you otherwise that's what it comes down to and don't feel jealous it's not constructive you really don't need that emotion in your life maybe all of you watching this are like kind of like what is Lucas talking about what a weirdo he's feeling je jealous about other people's work doesn't affect you great if it doesn't affect you awesome so we'll end it there I'm glad I got one good photo right at the end I like quite like that one at least for now I'll catch you guys in the next video. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it interesting and informative and something to think about. And of course, you know, leave comments and subscribe to the channel and do the likes and support us on Patreon and all those things we appreciate them. Check out our workshops and I'll catch you guys in the next video. And remember always, challenge your eye.